It was once King of the Skies, a fearsome fighting machine. Now, at first glance, this Wellington looks to be in something of a sorry state. In fact, at getting on for 70 years old, it's in pretty good shape. It was taken to pieces for the painstaking 155 mile road journey here. While the fabric shell will all need to be replaced, the structure underneath shows little sign of its age. This project aims to conserve as much of the original build as possible. There's some, some damage as you can see on this uh, piece of the structure here, quite possibly. This, this is old damage not done by us, I'd just like to add. And um, we'll, we'll just look at it, uh, but once we get the fabric off the outside, it'll give us more access inside. What we will try and do, this is the original piece of metal that was there, we'll do our best to keep the complete item, if not have to remove maybe a little part of it, but we'll look at shaping some metal inside. This plane last flew in 1955 when the RAF sold it to Vickers. It's thought to have been the final ever Wellington flight, the end of an era for a plane that was superseded by the Lancaster during World War II, but an aircraft which had been absolutely essential. It had a huge variation in payload. It, it could carry a number of bombs or it could carry a single large bomb. And they were very quickly adaptable. I suppose we, we term modern aircraft such as the Hercules as the modern workhorse of the Royal Air Force. This was the workhorse during the wartime effort. This particular Wellington is one of the last ones ever to be made. Although it flew twice during World War II, it never actually took part in operations. But it has secured its own personal place in history in the making of the film The Dam Busters. It was one of the stars of the film, and it was used for filming from the air. The Wellington had played a key role in the real story of the bouncing bomb too. Both of them designed by the same man, Barnes Wallace. Even if we made a few dummy bombs, you say you need a Wellington bomber for test drops. They're worth their weight in gold. Do you really think the authorities would lend you one? What possible argument could I put forward to get you a Wellington? Well, if you told them that I designed it, do you think that might help? His innovative design of the Wellington was based on airships, but massively strengthened without adding too much weight. In these days of heavily armoured aircraft, it seems almost unthinkable that these pilots were flying planes that were basically covered in fabric, but built around this carefully considered aluminium frame, and also with the fabric specially wrapped diagonally around the plane, it actually meant they withstood the rigours of war very well. Some of these aircraft came back in complete tatters, and quite often the ground crew and air crew would wonder how they got back. But they did get back, and they were very quickly repaired because of the fabric covering. The biggest threat to the Wellington is now corrosion of the metal frame. The team at the RAF Museum Conservation Centre are now working to remove it so that it doesn't spread. It is a labour of love. It's an ongoing task within the museum. Obviously, it's a, a huge priority for all of us to get it back in the museum. It's a very treasured artefact here. Particularly when you think about what it's been involved in in the past, it really gives that sentimental feeling to what you're doing as well. In some ways, it's our... Uh... Thank you to all the people that went flying during the war. Um, the, work, the work we do here, you know, we try and do the best we can with the information available to us. And a nice little thank you present for the, the brave guys that went up in the Second World War flying in these aeroplanes. Conserving this Wellington won't be a quick job. This aircraft is expected to spend around five years here. Once it returns to its former glory, it will go back on show at the RAF Museum in London. James Hurst, Forces News, Cosford.